Hey Art One, here is your introduction to color theory slideshow or how to not let a rainbow throw up on your artwork. So our lesson objectives are to understand the concept of color theory by learning how artists and designers categorize and use colors according to color schemes and how the relationships between colors are dependent on the color wheel. You're going to also demonstrate the ability to identify and paint the primary, secondary, and tertiary colors and also arrange them into various color schemes. Again, this is skill building for when you work with the acrylic paint. So why bother to care about color? We really take color for granted, right? Even if you're colorblind, you can still see some colors, right? Color is everywhere. It's in our clothes, it's in our furniture, it's all over our phones and electronic devices. So we really take it for granted. We just expect artwork to use beautiful, brilliant color. And yes, we all know something about color, but there's a lot of facts that hopefully you'll learn about today. So did you know that we have evolved to see color? There's this set of wavelengths called the electromagnetic spectrum, and we can only see the visible wavelength, which is actually a very tiny amount on this spectrum of wavelengths. They're types of energy. So it's color is actually an energy wavelength that our eyes are sensitive to on the electromagnetic scale. So we cannot see radio waves. We cannot see x-rays or gamma rays, right? This is all our eyes have evolved to see. So imagine there might be colors that we can't see, right? Imagine what would a color look like that we've never seen before. So what is color theory? It's the science and art of using color. Technically, it's a collection of rules and guidelines which artists and designers use. This includes color mixing, color relationships, and how colors visually affect each other. And we're going to go over all of that today. So what can you do with color? You can set a mood using color. You can attract attention using color. You can make a statement using color. You can energize or calm down a physical space using color. Psychologists have actually looked at how colors affect us, like emotionally and visibly, like how it affects our brains. So we will skip that. Why care about color? Well, over 80% of visual information that we receive, that would be TV commercials, advertisements, that relates to color. Color affects us. We can identify products because of the use of color, as you can see here. So color has psychological effects. Colors, we associate them with ideas, right? Like the color green, we associate that with organic. Color has aesthetic effects, right? Wow, that hair color looks so cool. And color has visual effects, right? Think about stop signs. Stop signs are red because red advances from other colors and that's a color we usually see first. Now, sculptures of the ancient world. Now, if you look at ancient sculptures from Greece and Rome, they're completely white, they're beige, they have no color. But archeologists and art historians have discovered that these sculptures used to be painted brilliant colors, but due to time and dust and all those years being exposed to the elements, the colors faded away. So just something to think about next time you see ancient sculptures. Now, what is a color wheel? It's a method for arranging colors due to their hue and color relationships. It's just a tool that artists and designers use. Now, there's three properties of color. The first one is hue. This is the name of the color, right? My hair is brown. The walls are beige. My jacket is blue and white, right? It's just the name of the color. Then colors also have an intensity. This is the brightness or dullness of a color. High saturation would be very bright, bright color. Desaturation or low intensity is more gray or just pure gray. You can change the intensity of your photographs on your phone just by changing the saturation levels. 
And that's what some of those filters actually do. They, they play around with the filters. The, they play around with the saturation settings. And then there's value. This is the lightness or darkness of a color, right? We are very familiar with black and white, right? White, gray, black, but colors also have a value of lightness and darkness. This is different from intensity. Now there's three important words we use when we talk about value and color, tints, tones, and shades. So a tint is a color plus white. You add, you, you take white, and you add color to it. Again, we're talking about in terms of color mixing. A shade is color plus black. This makes a color darker. A tint is a color that is lighter. And then there is a tone. Tone is color plus gray. This makes the color less intense. Now, what are color schemes? That is an arrangement or group of colors, often based on how the colors relate to each other according to the color wheel. So color schemes are how we talk about different color arrangements, but they're arranged based on where they're located on the color wheel. And you can see some examples here. So the first color scheme is the primary colors. This, you might have learned this back in kindergarten or in elementary or in middle school, but these are three colors that we use to, that we mix them to create all the other colors. You cannot make these colors by mixing other colors. The primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. Now, using those primary colors, when we mix the primary colors together, we create the secondary colors. That is purple or violet, purple, green, and orange. And so you can see how they start to fit together according to a color wheel. To make violet or purple, we mix red and blue together. To make green, we mix blue and yellow together. And to create orange, we mix yellow and red together. I'm not going to force you to mix your own secondary colors. That will be provided for you. Of course, you can always mix your own secondary colors. Now, we have one more set of colors that fit on the color wheel. This is, these are called the tertiary colors. They are created by mixing primaries and secondaries together. And you can see how they literally, when placed on the color wheel, they make a finished color wheel. And they're really easy to remember in terms of the names. Red-orange is mixing red and orange together. Yellow-green is mixing yellow and green together. Blue-green, which is like a turquoise or a teal, blue-green is mixing blue and green together. However, the colors must be next to each other on the color wheel. That's what makes them tertiary colors. Now let's get into color schemes, or as we call them, color harmonies. So a color harmony, it's just a, it's a pleasing arrangement of colors to the eye. Kind of like when you think of what music sounds good, when food tastes good, it creates a sense of order and balance. Now colors, a color harmony that is not harmon harmonious, that might be kind of chaotic or boring. So these are some other color schemes that designers and artists think about. We have this color scheme called complementary colors. These are two colors across from each other on the color wheel. And these, again, they have to be directly across from each other. So we've got red and green, we have yellow and violet, we have blue and orange. Yes, red and green is like Christmas colors, but that's just what we associate in terms of red and green. Now, the purpose of complementary colors is to create contrast. This is different than what you think looks, looks good together. For example, I think yellow and violet don't look good together. But according to the color schemes and color wheel, they are complementary colors. When you put them next to each other, they seem to almost vibrate because they, they appear very bright next to each other. So do tertiary colors have a complement? Our next color scheme are called analogous colors. These are three to four colors next to each other on the color wheel. Again, next to each other. We often see analogous colors used in art because it's pleasing to the eye. It makes sense. We often see it in clothing. The color transitions, because they're next to each other, it makes sense. It's a great way to create visual unity. And then we have another color scheme called monochromatic color schemes. This is where you're using the tints, tones, and shades of one color. Mono means one, 
Chroma means color, so one color. So let's say the monochromatic color scheme for this blue would be lighter blues, darker blues, and some tones of blue, right? Kind of low intense blues. So you're using all blues, but they're all just light, dark, and dull. So what is the purpose of using a monochromatic color scheme? Well, the color scheme is simple, it's clean, it has unity because it's using only one color, it's making it lighter, darker, and dull. Now, have you heard of this concept called the Pantone color of the year? So it's a chosen color uh, established by this company called Pantone, which creates color, which colors, which creates paints. Uh, and actually establishes colors used by designers and artists. It's a chosen color meant to represent and inspire the mood for that upcoming year. So the Pantone color of the year started in 2000. It uses the Pantone matching system, which is called PMS, and it's a system used by artists and designers, especially in marketing and in brands, um, to create color coordinated products. Um, designers look at this for fashion, marketing, weddings, home decor, tech gadgets, florists, anything that really depends on color to sell their products. So for example, in 2018, Ultraviolet, it was chosen because it, of originality, visionary thinking. Again, this is very subjective. You may not agree, but again, you can see some of the products that were being sold using this color of the year. During 2022, Very Perry was called the happiest and warmest of all the blue hues, meant to symbolize transition and new possibilities, right? Think about it, 2022, well, that was a couple years after the COVID pandemic of 2020. So of course you're gonna to wanna to choose a color, right? That is about transition. Viva Magenta for 2023 is described as brave and fearless, a pulsating color whose exuberance promotes a joyous and optimistic celebration, writing a new narrative. Again, you may not agree. I think it's just kind of interesting though, the way marketing and brands really look at color for how they're gonna go in a certain direction. 2016 was weird. It had two colors of the year and you can see some of the separate ones. If you're really curious, pause and do a little bit of a Google search for the Pantone colors of the year. Now, the last thing is the color temperatures, warm colors and cool colors. Cause when you divide the color wheel in half, you end up with warms and cools. So warm colors. Uh, warm colors suggest vividness and energy, and they tend to advance in space. Advance means we, our eyes, we see warm colors first, right? Think about stop signs. Stop signs are red because they stand out and we see them. If they were not red, if they were gray or blue, we would likely drive right through the intersection. And there's some more examples of warm colors. Cool colors, these give an impression of calm, coolness, and create a soothing, cool feeling. So mostly blues and greens. And yes, yellow green is technically a warm color, but regular green is a cool color. Our last set of colors are called neutral colors. These are muted shades that appear to lack color. Now they seem to have some colors, right? This might have some green, this might have some orange, this might have some violet, but we think of them more as earth tones, right? Blacks, grays, browns. And we do see uh, neutral colors being used in paintings and inside um, room decor.